Let us pray. O Lord, we call on your spirit to fill us this day. We know your great love from those who have touched our lives, our grandmothers, our mothers, and maybe an aunt or a teacher or a friend, or one who is close to us. Let us remember as we open ourselves to you, those who have loved us and have been those persons who have helped us to know you. We pray in Christ's name. Now let us con confess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe God the Father Almighty, maker in heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitted at the right hand of the Father Almighty, from which he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Children, please join me down front. Really? That is very cool. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Everybody's doing well. Do you know what today is? Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. Now, tell me, what is Mother's Day about? About um. mothers. <laughs> That's right. It's about mothers. About celebrating our moms, right? Yeah. Yes. So today, a little bit later, I'm going to preach about to a mother and a grandmother in the Bible. And their names were Lois. Can you say Lois? Lois? Say Lois. Lois. Lois and Eunice. Can you say Eunice? Eunice. Eunice. John Mark, can you say Eunice? Yes. Eunice, that's right. Lois and Eunice were a guy named Timothy. They were his mother and his grandmother. And they taught him all about Jesus, right? Yes. So um, they also taught him that he's supposed to live like Jesus. What is that? Ah, uh, do you know, do you know what they taught him? You know what they taught Timothy? They taught him that we're to love one another. Yes? They taught him that we're supposed to be nice to everybody. What do you think about that? Um, yes? Jesus tells us to be nice to each other. That's right, and that's what they told Timothy. So today... I want you all to go back and to hug your mommies and to thank them for teaching you about Jesus, okay? Okay? okay. All right, let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. And thank you for my mommy. And for teaching her to teach me to love Jesus. Amen. All right, let's go to Children's Church. You ready? Let's go. There's this Mickey.
You may have a seat as we come to this sweet hour of prayer. We lift Tom and Barbara Pate this morning, Sarah Smith, our security guard, and her husband, Smitty, and the family of Jackie Wilkes, who passed away in January. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, have your way in this place this morning, for we have indeed come to worship and adore you. Oh God, we're grateful for this, your house of worship. We're grateful for those that have gathered for generations in this place to praise your holy name. Oh God, this morning we give thanks for our mothers our mothers, both biological and relational, those who have nurtured us and have grown us up in the faith, O oh God. We give thanks for those who have stood in the gap when our own mothers could not be present with us. We give thanks for those that you have put in our path to encourage us and to draw us nearer to you, O oh God. We give thanks for this sweet hour of prayer. This moment where we pause and bring our joys and concerns to you, O oh God, for we know that when we pray that you hear us, that our prayers do not fall on mute ears, on deaf ears, but that our prayers are heard and that you are acting on our behalf, no matter what it looks like. O oh God, you are there. We pray for our world. We pray for the hatred in our world. We pray for the, the desolate places in our world. We pray for the hunger in our world, oh God. We pray that you would make your presence known, that you would allow us to be instruments of your peace and your love and your hope, oh God. That because we are present, the world is a better place because we are living like you. God, we lift those who are on our prayer list those who are shut in and homebound, those who are in nursing homes and rehab facilities, those who are in hospitals. We pray for those who sleep on our front steps. We pray for those who sleep in parks and underpasses all around this city, oh God. Remind them that you have not left them and that you do not forsake them, but that you are indeed the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end, and that you have the last word, that you are one that keeps your promises to heal, to guide, to comfort, and to provide. Oh God, we pray for our leaders, the leaders of this world, the leaders of this nation, the leaders of this state, of this city, of this denomination, and of this congregation. Help us to be people that are led by you, O oh God. Not our will, but your will be done. O oh God, we ask forgiveness for those things that we have left undone. And we ask forgiveness for those things that we did that we knew better than to do. Oh God, transform us, revive us, restore us, renew a passion within us to be the people called Christians. Oh God, we pray that you would overwhelm the preacher of this hour. Not my words, oh God, but your words. Not my will, but your will, oh God. Show up and show out in this place. And God, we ask that you would bless these gifts of offering and tithe that we are about to give. Help us to be generous givers, for you have indeed poured out generously on us. Multiply these gifts that we are about to give so that we might continue to be your hands and feet in this world, in this city, and beyond. Oh God, we thank you for teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. when 
God proved His love for me. The anchor holds. Though the ship has been battered, the anchor Though the sails are torn, I have fallen, fallen down on my knees as I face the raging seas, the anchor holds in spite of In spite of the storm Amen. The anchor holds in spite of the storm. That is an on-time message for us today. Hear now these words from 2 Timothy, from the first chapter. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of self-discipline. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we gather together in your name to worship you. We gather expecting that you will speak to our hearts in this place right now. So Holy Spirit, rain down, overwhelm us in this place. Overtake this preacher so that your people might hear a word straight from you, oh God. So word of God, speak. Pour down like rain. Open our eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you are in this place. Please let us stay in rest in your holiness. This is your servant's prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. The very earliest song I remember was the song that my Aunt Mary taught me. She said, Jesus, I'm depending on you. Jesus, I'm depending on you. Jesus, I'm depending on you. I'm depending on you to see me through. And some of the earliest words that I remember my mother speaking to me, she would say, Jasmine Rose, who loves you, baby? And the correct answer was God. 
She say, Jasmine Rose, who loves you, baby? Jesus. Jasmine Rose, who loves you? Mommy. <laughs> And it was in that order and in that way that I learned who Jesus is and why Jesus was important in my life and why we are to tell the world about who Jesus is. I can think of no better time than now for the people of God to grow up. I can think of no better time than now for the people of God to live out the scriptures, to live out the teaching of Jesus, the resurrected Christ that came so that we might have life and have it in what? Abundance. I can think of no better time than now for the people of God to live out the legacy of those old church mothers who taught us to tell the world about Jesus. Timothy means he who honors God. And Timothy was a disciple of Paul who is writing this letter to Timothy while he is behind bars and about to die. Can you imagine being imprisoned for living out your faith and writing words of grace, mercy, and peace? This is the context in which we encounter Paul today, writing to Timothy, whom he calls his dear son, because he is expecting Timothy to live out his legacy of preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he knows that somebody got a hold of Timothy before Paul did. He knew his mother and his grandmother, and he knew their faith. He knew that their faith was sincere and that it was pure, and that at the end of the day, the only thing that mattered to them is that they knew that they knew that they knew who God is and who Jesus is, and that their Redeemer was indeed resurrected. He knew that Lois and Eunice sowed into Timothy seeds of peace, of grace, of justice, of mercy, of love, and of service. He knew that that was the very DNA of Timothy. And he knew it because he'd had an encounter with his mother and his grandmother. So he knew where Timothy came from. See, Lois and Eunice just weren't your regular side of the road people of that day. They were at the very forefront of the Jesus movement. They were one of the very first Christians who started the church movement. He knew that their work was the reason that the word of the resurrected Christ was going out throughout the land. They were incubators of faith. And because they had been incubators of faith, so was Timothy. I don't know about you, but I've had several incubators of faith who have poured into my life and nurtured me and gotten me to where I am today. If it had not been for their faith, I would not be standing here today. If it had not been for the faith of my mother and my aunt and my grandmother who sit on that road today, I would not be standing here as one of your pastors of this church because it, because it was those women who prayed me through, who taught me the songs of the word, the words of the song, yes, Jesus loves me. They taught me 
that no matter what I saw, that beyond a shadow of a doubt, that God was always with me, that God is one who keeps God's promises, that faith in God is never for naught. There are the women who fostered the faith in me. I wonder how many of you have had women in your lives who have been incubators of faith, who have wrapped their arms around you and walked you through this journey called life. I wonder how many of you have had a Lois or a Eunice in your life who have gotten you to where you are today. If it had not been for your Lois or your Eunice, where in the world would you be? Who would have prayed for you? Who would have encouraged you? Who would have introduced you to the redemptive love of Jesus? Mother's Day is a difficult day for many. For many sit without a mother that they so desperately loved. Many sit in places missing someone who was like mother to them. Many gather in sanctuaries around the nation painfully reminded that they cannot have their own child. But those two have the faith and the assurance of knowing that God has always provided a Lois and a Eunice for you. And a Lois and a Eunice opportunity for you. Look around. Who could you be Lois to? Who could you be Eunice to? Who could you wrap in your arms and nurture them in the faith so that they know the scriptures, so that they know the promises of God, so that they know no matter what life looks like, no matter what it brings to them, no matter what the doctors say, that God has the last word. When they say cancer, you say, I know the healer. When they say, (laughs) Alzheimer's, you say, I know Jesus. When they say, laid off, you say, provider. When they say, hungry, you say, bread of life. When they say, disgusting, you say, lily of the valley that came to save me. When they say broke, you say, I know the one who is rich in houses and land. Nurturing someone in the faith, fostering faith is more about telling them about the name of Jesus. It is about walking them through life so that they have an encounter with Christ, so that no matter what, it's not just your word, but it's experience. It is knowing that you know that you know that your Redeemer is indeed living and well, that your Redeemer is walking you through every situation in your life, that the Alpha and Omega is your beginning and end, that the Alpha and Omega is your first and last, that this is a personal faith. It's not just dead words on a page, but it is a gift, a gift that we fan so that the flame burns brightly all over the world so that when you walk into the room, everybody wants to know what's different about you. They want to know why you have a pet in your step and a glide in your side slide. They want to know why you're smiling when everybody else is frowning. They want to know why, 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 why. 
And you say, amazing grace. <laughs> How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You say, I know my Redeemer lives. You say, I once was lost. But now I'm what? Found. Was blind. But now I see. Timothy said, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that now lives in you. We talk about Atlanta first being the mother church of Methodism in Atlanta. It takes a lot to be a mother and even more to be a mother church. We have to take on what it means to nurture people in the faith. It's not just a word, but it is an action, an activity, a DNA that says that this congregation is a place where people can not only come and encounter Jesus, but can grow up in the faith because somebody took them by the arm and said, baby, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me show you what God did for me. Let me tell you about that time when. We have to be people who are willing to open up our lives in such a way that it invites others in and we incubate. Their faith. Are we inhibitors? or incubators? Do we stand in the way of introducing people to Jesus? Do we stand in the way of nurturing them into a redemptive relationship? Or are we catalysts for that relationship? Talk is cheap. Actions speak louder than words. If we are going to be the mother church of Methodism in Atlanta, we have to become an incubator of faith. We cannot stand in the way of people but fling wide open the doors and say, come in here, I'm going to take you by the arm and I'm going to walk with you because somebody walks with me. Do we bless others? Are we grateful to God in word and deed? Do we serve others, not just because the preacher said so, but because that is who we are and whose we are? Do we pray for others? Not just on Sunday morning, but taking the, the prayer list and praying through it each and every day. Are we filled with joy? When people come into contact with you, do they know that they know that you, they know that you have a joy that cannot be impaled by anything that comes your way? Do we live out our faith boldly? Are we unapologetic in who we are and whose we are? Is our faith sincere. The people of God will have to come to grips with the fact that it is time to grow up. The people of God will have to step outside of their comfort zones and really live into what it means to be followers of Christ. And if not, the world will go to hell. It is up to the people of God to live a sincere faith. It is up to the people of God to be inhibitors, to be incubators of faith. Not to stand in the way of anybody, but to be catalysts of relationships with Jesus Christ.
We can no longer stand on the side and wait for people to find their own way. We can no longer say the first thing that comes to our mouths if it is not Christ-like. We can no longer sit in our pews and wait for the people to come. But we go out knowing that somebody deserves to have an experience like we've had. Knowing that there are babies out just a mile from here who do not have mothers. Knowing that there are children all over this state who are in foster homes and in different places in state care who need to know what it means to be nurtured and cared for. What if the people of God grew up? What if the people of God got to a place where their primary responsibility and primary joy was to nurture and to help grow somebody else up? What if we became people who fostered faith? What if we became people who knew our Jesus and had a deep enough relationship with Christ on our own to show somebody else the way? What if some of these folks on these pews and in churches all around this nation found somebody else who was sitting in the same church and said, you know what, I'm going to walk with you. You know what, I'm going to talk with you. You know what, I'm going to share my life with you because you need to know who my Jesus is. Because you need to know that, young mother, you can make it. You need to know that, young father, you can make it. You need to know that, young person in the work field, you're going to be all right. You need to know that, young adult, you're going to be all right. Teacher to teacher, it's going to be okay. You're going to survive that classroom. Friend to friend, there's no other like the friend we have in Jesus. I wonder if this church has a Timothy spirit. If we are people who have the sincere faith of our ancestors. If we are people who when others encounter us, they know that our faith is sincere. Not that we just wake up on Sunday morning and go to church because that's what we're supposed to do. We don't just gather in the house of the Lord because mama said so. But we gather to worship and adore the God who blessed us, who gave us life and who walks with us every step of the way. I wonder if this church would take on the spirit of Eunice and of Lois, pouring into those who have not yet had the same encounters that we have. I wonder if we'll live up to our baptismal covenant when we baptize children in the United Methodist Church, we say that we will walk with them, that we will lead them to the life eternal, that we will take every step of the way with them, and that we will point the way to Jesus for them. I wonder if we'll be that church. I wonder if we'll be that community. I wonder if we'll be people who foster faith. When I was a little girl, I was <laughs> in the grocery store with my dad, and all of a sudden, we heard screams across the grocery store, Mommy, Mommy is Jesus! <laughs> Daddy looked around. <laughs> It's not Jesus, it's just your pastor, young man. <laughs> but for that kid whom dad had baptized, for that kid who had children's church with daddy every week, 
for that kid who'd had his pastor in his home around his dinner table. For that kid, he was Jesus. Who will you be Jesus for? Who will mistake you in the aisles of the grocery store, in the cubes at work, in the bridge places, in the food places? Who will mistake you for Jesus? Nicole Norderman said, I want to live a legacy. How will they remember me? Did I choose to love? Did I point to you, God, enough to make a mark on things? I want to live an offering, a child of mercy and grace who blessed your name unapologetically and leave that kind of legacy. You don't have to be a mother this morning to leave a legacy. You don't have to be Lois or Eunice or a preacher or a teacher to leave a legacy of loving God. All you have to do is live like Jesus. All you have to do is find somebody to mentor in the faith. All you have to do is take somebody by the hand and say, I'll go with you. I'll pray for you. I'll study the scriptures with you. I'll encourage you. I'll lead you. Because I've already been there. Will we be incubators or inhibitors? Will we foster or will we impede? What will be your legacy? How will they remember you? Did you choose to love?
as we sing our hymn of invitation, hymn number 369, Blessed Assurance, we sing knowing the assurance we have in Jesus Christ. If you would like to enter into this same assurance, I invite you to join me at the altar this morning. Let us stand and sing together. If you're saying, I heard you, Reverend Jasmine, and I'm ready to be an incubator of faith this morning. When you leave here, call somebody who needs to be encouraged. Come visit our day school. There are little children who need to know you and need to know the presence of God in their lives. Study with somebody. Pray for somebody. Go forth from this place as incubators who foster faith in this city and beyond. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs> 